Divinities about 20 years ago when Cleena was a, a four and five year old child. Uh, my background as well is uh, Pat will know that I, I worked for a voluntary capacity for many years with Don Sunder Ireland. I was the treasurer of the Dublin branch, then I was a, the chairperson of the Dublin branch, and then I sat on the uh, national executive for a, a couple of years as well. I also, as well as a young parent, were very clear and listened to some of the parents here today, remind me of the time 20 years ago we set up a group called Parents for Integration which is parents of different children with disabilities who absolutely had no services at all. And we campaigned and lobbied for services uh, uh, for our children because when they were starting school, uh, there, there was absolutely no services there at all. So that's my background. As well as speaking as a minister, I'm also speaking as a parent. So when I heard some of your comments from the floor and some of the, the, uh, the details, I, I totally identify with all the issues you're talking about. And I think it's very important. I'll respond to some of the individual questions there. I just want to say a few very uh, brief things, first of all, because I think it's important that, uh, that uh, I just get the, these uh, couple of messages across, because I came here this morning to listen to your views. I heard a lot of views. I've spent the last number of weeks going around talking to parents, talking to disability groups. I've another one today at half one. So that's hence my problem that I, that I said earlier on to Paddy. But to go back to the issue is, I want to spend the next four or five weeks going around. I'm in Galway tonight, I'm going to be in Cork and Clare over the next couple of weeks. I want to meet as many people with disabilities, the people, the parents, and then in that process, gather a kind of more up-to-date view of the disability sector. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I was also uh, very interested in Rita and, and, uh, and Averill's uh, excellent contributions from their own life's experience, because I think that's the important thing there uh, when you're talking about particularly young adults with intellectual disabilities. We have the whole situation of the school leavers issue as well. And my, my, my immediate problem is to try and resolve the, 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 uh, the school leavers lack of places that happens every May, June. And at the moment I'm working with the HSE on this particular issue. But that is a priority issue for me. But I also want to say as well, my vision for the whole ministry is I want to change the mindset uh, 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 of the broader society on people with disability. Because when I talk about my daughter, when I talk about your children or your brothers and sisters, I'm talking about them as citizens and they have rights as citizens in this state. And that is the agenda that I want to push in relation to these issues. I also was very interested there, I was smiling when I heard Sinead talking about the PA issue. I remember very close uh, recently, a couple of years ago, when I was uh, taking on somebody to, uh, as a carer for my daughter, Kleena. Uh, she was very much part of the interview process. I remember calling in, and her, the, the, the joke at the time was when she was interviewing uh, uh, Claire at the time, some of the, she asked her all the questions because she was interviewed about her hobbies, but the final question that swung it in the interest of the care was, did she like glee and did she like discos? <laughs> so when I asked Claire later on, who did she pick she wanted to pick the one that like glee and discos? So I just make it, the, 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 the important thing is to point out that, that uh, that the choice of the young person with an intellectual disability is very, very important. During the, the formation of the famous uh, programme for government, you will see, if you look at the details of it, there's a lot of sections in that in relation to disability. And sometimes this hasn't been mentioned at all. For example, one of the plans on page 56 is the extension of the medical care for all children in receipt of the domiciliary care allowance. And there's about approximately 10,000 children there. We're also trying to increase the disability benefit and uh, the carer's benefit and the blind person's pension. You probably saw it this week, the, the respite care grant that was cut over the last some years has been restored and will be up on the system uh, this week. And also this will have direct effect on 17,000 carers. But I'd also point out, when I heard the figure 17,000 carers, I know for a fact there are a lot of more carers out there in the broader society than that figure. So what I'd say to parents and uh, disability organisations, keep an eye on that this week. I think it's out on Thursday. The other issue that uh, we're pushing very strongly is the new, a new mobility scheme. Also, I think David mentioned his question about the rights and service for people with disabilities. I think you asked a question there about the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. That's in the programme for government, and we're trying to get that implemented over the next couple of months as well. Also, in relation to speech and speech and language service, this is another huge issue that I'm pushing, and that's also included as well. So to go back to the, the this morning's talk, we're here this morning because we're talking about uh, uh, personalised budgets. I am supporting personalised budgets in a very, very strong way, but I'm also listening to the parents, and I'm listening to you, 
people on the ground because there are many, many different views on this particular issue. So based on what I've heard so this morning, I also want to say the Transforming Lives programme is a very, very important programme and that's something that I will be pushing. But I also want to see a seismic shift in disabilities, how disability services are funded and provided. i just take some water and try it up. <laughs> but um, the important thing there is to get that. So in relation to the, 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 the main reason why I'm here this morning, about the personalised uh, budgets and the task force, the establishment of a task force and personalised budgets is a key element in, this, in the programme for government. And the, basically it's a commitment to give people with disabilities more control in access and services, greater in independence and choice. Also, it's very important to know, while the concept of personalised budgets is not limited to health and personal and social services, nor is it confined to people with disabilities, my initial view is that the task force should concentrate on personalised budgets for services for people with disabilities funded by the HSE in the first instance. Some of the work, as you know already, has commenced uh, on scoping of, of how to introduce individualised budgets in the disability area as part of transforming lives. This is a very complex project and we heard some of the views here this morning. So what I'm saying is, and it has been examined today as part of a development of commissioning and activity based funding framework for the whole health sector. So I'm keen to set up this task force and it will answer some of the questions that you raised this morning. This, uh, uh, this will help to drive the impo this important project. The first step is to identify a suitable person to chair the task force. And that would be somebody, hopefully, with a long disability uh, experience. The next actions will address the detailed arrangements, including deciding on the membership of the task force and the secretariat, defining the scope of the project and setting out clear terms of reference, developing a project plan, a plan and associated timelines. So this is basically what's, what I'm trying to do at the moment. So what I'm saying is we're trying to ensure that there's a, it's a very complex detailed issue. We need people in there who have, who have a long personal experiences in relation to these issues. In relation to the individualised funding, there are, the reality is that a lot of par uh, parents and families might necessarily want it. But I'm talking about, we're talking about choice, we're talking about control, as some of, uh, as some of the speakers uh, 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 have mentioned already. Some of families, of people particularly with severe intellectual dis disabilities, might want to have a, their own model. So what I'm saying is, I'm open to the ideas and we're open to the whole thing, but the key thing is the rights and choice to get the services. The governance of this whole issue has to be correct. We have to be very, very specific. Also, accountab accountability uh, has to be based on evidence-based facts. In other words, we've got to know and exactly what the story is in relation to this, this issue. So these are my main points in relation to the whole uh, debate about the personalised budgets. Uh, also this morning, you did raise some of the questions from the floor. I just want to touch them for a minute, buddy, if that's okay. Uh, in relation to the autism services, absolutely. If anybody uh, 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 hasn't got a proper service, I would say to them, contact me, me directly because I have seen recently a lot of gaps in the services and you know yourself. So the answer to your question is absolutely, I'll do my best for you. You've seen as well, the little woman over there raised the, the respite care services. Uh, these have been slashed for many years yeah. when you're talking to it. So what I'm trying to do is, and again, I'm not going to make any big wishy-washy promises, but I will do my best to do it, and I have prioritised that with, the, with, my, with my team in the HSE and the Department of Health. So that's the thing, because they have been slashed, you're right. I accept the point, there's no debate about it, because when I talk to parents for the last seven or eight years, the service, respite service, and also I take your point is, the respite services from, from the service where the person is used to having that service. Because yeah, I know exactly, yeah. my daughter's in, Fingo, in uh, Prosper Services in, in, um, in Swords, and they, any time they do get respite, it's with the staff and the team that they know, and it's just very, very supportive, because you know that they need lots of stability and uh, issues like that. The capacity legislation, I think Paddy asked about that. That is, as far as I know, that's the Minister of Justice, but I double check, I think that's gonna happen soon. Uh, also, the UN Convention on the Human, uh, UN Convention on the Human Rights is going to be, is going to be uh, 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 dealt with hopefully in the next six months, that's my plan on this. The school leavers issues, a number of parents rest about justice and rights and the choice also. And there is a shortage, and there is a huge shortage, so we have to deal with that issue. I think it was Candy mentioned the severe intellectual disabilities. Like there. 
that is a, a, a huge issue. But I, I say, my personal view, but again, I'd have to fast forward to decide this. My personal view is the families and the person with the intellectual disability decide the services they, they want. Nobody's going to be forced to take any particular service. So finally, uh, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, it's, I, I'm only two weeks in the job, but basically what I'd say to you is I'll do my best for all people uh, with, uh, with physical and intellectual disabilities. I will work very, very closely with all families and people who have an interest in the whole issue. And I just want to give a clear commitment that we need to ensure that we get a justice and equality for all people with disabilities. Thank you very much. So, uh, thanks to the Minister for that. And um, we look forward to engaging on the staff of the task force, which I think was committed in the first three months of this government. So, um, and I think just to say, in terms of the complexity of the issue, there's actually a lot of experience of this happening at the moment in other countries, and there's probably no barrier to this being introduced by the HEC immediately. That doesn't mean that we can't be working on the task force at the same time, but there's no reason why funding today could be used to individualise uh, models. You know, so there's no reason why this can't happen tomorrow. Um, Thank you, Minister, again, for taking the time out and giving us a couple of hours to show